Today we're making fancy animated stripes in Fusion. This is a really easy way to spice up any motion graphic. It's super simple, just gonna take a couple minutes. So this is a nice playful style. We learn a couple techniques on how to actually generate the stripes, how to animate things, how to do the stroke around this text. There are a lot of nice graphics concepts here. So let's dive in. In our media pool, let's right click and just say new Fusion composition. We'll leave it at five seconds. Sounds good, I'll hit create and double click on this Fusion composition to open it up here in the Fusion page. One thing I'll do is go up to workspace and uncheck show page navigation just to hide those buttons down here and give us a little bit of room and let's start with the background just grab a background node drag that in and let's bring up the inspector and let's make this kind of a blue something like that and then let's put our text down this will be the third icon over just drag that in take the output and merge it over our background one like that and let's type in our word stripes and you can pick whatever font looks good to you. I'm gonna go with Gotham Ultra Italic, and there's our text. Now, to actually get these stripes going, we're gonna use a shape node. If we hit Shift Spacebar and type S, R, E, C, that'll bring up the S rectangle. And if you're not familiar with shape nodes, kind of what they do, is they generate a shape, but it's a lot like, you know, generating a 3D shape or something like that. It's not really making an image. It's kind of just doing some math right now. And in order to make this into an actual image, we need a S render node. And so now, I mean, it does look the same right here, but we can't merge a S rectangle over things. We can only put it into an S render and we can take the output of that and put that over things. A lot like a render of a 3D node or a particle render. So you can think of shapes as as math and then this converts the math into an image. So let's take this S rectangle and I'm gonna take the width down a lot and the height up to like two and then just turn this at an angle and then kind of push it off to the side right here because I want to make a bunch of these stripes and I can do that with a node called S duplicate, S D U P like this. And now if I push up the copies a bit and then take the X offset up, we'll see we have our stripes and we'll just put a bunch of copies in here. I don't know, maybe like 20 and we can change the width of our original stripe and change the offset in our duplicate node just to make a bunch of stripes like that. There are a lot of ways you could probably make stripes in Fusion, but this is a nice way. And what's cool is if you just adjust this original rectangle, either the width or the height or whatever, that will apply to all of the stripes. I'll also change the style. Let's make this like a dark pink maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll do a light pink. Who knows? We'll get crazy. So there's our stripes and we can limit these stripes to be inside of the text just by taking the output of our text and putting that into the mask input of our merge two like this. And then I'll hit two on this media out and look at that. We got stripes, baby. Let's take this text in here under a color. Let's make that like a nice pink. Let's change our stripe color to maybe be just a little darker than that. And we can take our merge, our blend and our merge down to kind of adjust that. Yeah, something like that. And because this is an italic font, we have these angles just slightly different. And I think that looks unintentional because it is. And so let's adjust the angle of our stripes and just make them a little bit more intense, something like that. By the way, if you're having a good time and you are new to Fusion, I wanna make sure you don't miss my free workshop, the nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion. When you're starting out learning Fusion, there are hundreds of nodes to learn and it can be overwhelming. So this is my attempt to make it a little more chill. I realize there's only like a few nodes that I use on a regular basis to make most things. And so there's a free workshop available right here or there's a link in the description. Okay, let's get back to getting stripey. And now we can animate this stripe by just moving this rectangle back and forth. And look what we got going on here. We could just start that there and then we'll just click this keyframe and then move all the way to the end. And I don't know, push this to the left a little bit, something like that. So now when we play this, we got the stripes kind of moving across the letters. Say what? Say what? Say what? That's looking pretty nice, but we can make this even better. Let's put a little stroke around these letters. There's a lot of ways to do that, but here's a fun way to do it. Let's take this text. I'll hit control C, double click off and hit control shift V. That's gonna make an instance of our text, which is basically like a linked copy. And let's merge this under the text by putting it to the left here. And now when we select this instant text, if we make any change to this text, it's going to apply to both the text and the instance text, okay? So we have the instance text under it as its own thing and we have the original text over it. So if we go to instance text, that's hard to say, instance text. Wow. Wow. And we go over to the shading tab. There are these different shading elements for a text plus. 
And this lets you do all kinds of fancy things, outlines, drop shadows, things like that. And what I'll do is just right click here where it says enabled and select D instance. What that's gonna do is let us individually control this parameter on this node and have it not affect this node. So when I click enabled, if I just bring up our two viewers here, here is our instance text and here is our regular text. They're using all the same things except for we can see the outline on the instance and not on the regular text. I'm gonna make this white for a second. First of all, push up this thickness a little bit. The reason we're doing that is because we're using this text as a mask for our stripes. And if we were to just use this text with the outlines as a mask, then we're gonna put that stripe over the outlines too. And we just want it on the inside. And so this text is just gonna be the inside like this, bloop. In fact, we don't even need to merge this over twice. We can just have two different copies here. Look at this. We could rename this text fill. This would be like text with stroke, right? Looking sweet. So now let's not have this say stripes one, just stripes is fine. And now we have our fancy pants text. So pants fancy, but let's not stop there. Let's make the background a little bit better. I'm gonna take all of this right here, copy this, control C, double click off and then hit control V. And let's merge this kind of stuff over the background. Look what happens. Oh, we got stripes in the background. Oh, he's crazy. And by default, it's sort of like we can see the stripes through the text, which might be what you want. The one problem is that we're starting with this stripe off screen a little bit. So let's just start with this over here, maybe. And we'll end with it farther. Yeah, so we got that kind of thing going on. So that's cool. But I think what we'll do is just take this rectangle here and let's change the angle. We have those being very different. Yeah, that's cool. Then maybe we'll take the style of this background and we can kind of change that around to be whatever we want. Take the merge and just blend this down a little bit. Then we can just push it up to where it's tasteful, right? So now we have this nice looking thing. Yeah, that looks cool. A couple things let's do. Let's add a little drop shadow under this text. Just say SH for shadow and we can push this down a little bit and there, look at all these cool things we can do. We can just leave it like that. That looks nice. We turn this purple. That looks cool. It like already looks great. Even soften this if we want it to be more of a, you know, kind of a shadow. We take the alpha down to blend that a little bit. A lot of cool stuff we can do with that. Oh, so sick. So easy too. Look at this. You can make these funky graphics. You can just kind of play around. You don't need to keep things so serious. You know what I mean? This is cool. So there's our stripes. It's looking pretty sweet. Let's add one more little touch here. Let's do something for the background. Let's maybe grab this brightness and contrast and we'll take the gamma down a little bit. This is just affecting the background. Okay. Take the gamma down just a touch and then let's mask this with an ellipse and I'm just going to make like a vignette. We'll just soften that out. So now we just have that a little darker on the edges. So here's before and here's after. Yeah, that looks sick. Okay. There's our stripes. One last thing I'll do is maybe zoom this out a little bit, which you could do with dynamic zoom on the edit page, or you could just do something like grab a transform. We'll just have this end at one as far as our size and then push it up just a touch at the beginning. And now we have this nice little subtle movement. Looks pretty sweet and it's really easy to do in Fusion. Little animated fancy stripes. Oh baby. This is so much fun. What a simple technique. And man, it just elevates the design in such a cool way. And it's, man, it's just simple. If you're new here, my name is Casey and I like to teach people how to use Fusion and make motion graphics and visual effects and generally make their videos better. So I'm really excited you're here. I have lots of tutorials on Fusion, so make sure to check those out. Here's one of those. And also don't forget the nine nodes workshop. All right, going over simplifying all the nodes in Fusion. So awesome video, nine nodes. I recommend you do both. I recommend it. Have a good day.